Glory to God. Can you, you hear me now? Yes. Okay, give Jesus a bigger hand clap then. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Give him the glory of praise. Hallelujah. God is good. And all the time, I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, God is great. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Look the person in the eye and say, God is a good God. And I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, I'm glad to be here on this valuation day. the question, are you glad? Oh, are you glad? Hallelujah. Come on, give me the baby clap. Come on. Are you glad for the candidates here today? Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then you want to run away with the mic. <laughs> but we give God thanks. Amen. God is good. Hallelujah. And I, it really comes a privilege today to be a part of this graduation today. And I really trust God is doing something great. And that's just a seed, there's something beginning to birth in them now to yeah. go forth to do great things that is ahead of them. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so, with time, time, my time is limited too. I've got 15 minutes to 20 minutes too. Glory to God. So, I'm going to do what I have to do here. And I just want to make a little short address myself. So, if you have your covenants, your Bible, let me get some of these papers up to the first and foremost. Glory to God. Glory to God. Are you there? Yes. Glory to God. I think we go to the book of 2 Timothy, a well known verse of the scripture. Second Timothy chapter who? Two. Two. Alright. So I guess you can guess the verse which verse now. <laughs> All right. I greet the Holy Spirit who is the head of our life, the gradients, ministers, and the Mitchell, all the pastors and ministers in the house, visiting friends, well wishes I greet you in the wonderful, marvelous name of Jesus. Our soon coming king. Greetings. 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 Alright, one, 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 Approve unto God a word man need it not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. Are you hearing me today? Today I want to share with us on the topic, the topic entitled, Rightly Dividing the Word of Truth. Amen. Rightly Amen. Dividing the Word of Truth. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, Rightly Dividing the Word of Truth. <laughs> Rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay, bow your heads everywhere. Let me just get in the mode of what God wants to do here. Today. Heavenly Father, now God, I want to thank you for this time and this moment. As I stand within the short time that I have to break your word, I pray, God, that you speak through me, that your words will go forth with power and clarity, touching, piercing the heart of your people, moving them on to another level where the glory of God will be manifest in the marchless name of Jesus. We look to you, God, that you will confirm your word right now with signs and wonderful. And as we give you thanks and we give you praise now in Jesus' name. And the church say, Amen. And the church say, Amen. amen and amen. amen glory to God let me get on with it glory to God now we, as we look in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 we will see that the believers is presented is presented in seven characters seven characters in other words in verse 1 we see that he is called a son in verse 3 we see that he is called a soldier in verse 5 we see that he is called an athlete in verse 6 we see that he is called an husband man in verse 15 we see that he is called a workman within verse 21 we see that he's called a vessel and last but not least but in verse 24 we see that he is called a servant am i talking to somebody here today in other words what we're saying that with each of these seven characters 
factors. There is a what you call, there is a suited exaltation. In other words, as a son, Timothy is exalted to be strong in grace. Uh, you hear me today? To be what? Strong in grace. Now, grace goes with sonship just like the law goes with servitude. Are uh, you hear me today, somebody? My time of living, I'm just cutting through. Are uh, you hear me today? Uh, and so as we see as a soldier, Timothy is exhorted to what you call endure hardness and to avoid worldly entanglements. These are right elements of a good soldiership. Can I move on, somebody? We see that also that as a vessel, Timothy is to be cleansed and separated. That means you can't dingle and dangle in any and everything. Are uh, you hear me today? Come on. Last but not least, we see that as a servant, he is to be gentle. He is to be patient. He is to be meek. Are uh, you hear me today? And so with each of these seven, what you call aspect, hallelujah, of the life as a Christian, that is what God requires of us. Are you hearing me today? But as we look back in verse 15, he is told that what is required of him as a work man. Are you hearing me today? Now, when we go back to the verse, study to show, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Are you hearing me today? In other words, the word of truth then has right division. I'm going to say that again. The word of truth then has right division. And it must be an evident. It must be evident that as the one cannot be a workman, be need not be ashamed without observing them. So any what you call study of that word which ignored those, those division must be in large measure profitless and what you call confusing. Amen. Watch, I'm going somewhere with this. Yeah. Listen to me. Many Christians today freely confess that they find the study of the Bible weary work. Are you hearing me? Yes. We find it weary work. Yes. We can't find time. It's too hard to study the word. It's too hard to get in there. And that's why everybody shunned away from the word of God. Yes. Then we have more find it so, so ashamed, who, was, who are ashamed to make the confession. Are you hearing me? But let us, better because of time, let us now look back at the verse where we have read a while ago. Where the Bible says, study to show thyself approved. Notice the first word. Say, what study? study? Let me hear you say, study. study. Say it again. Study. Say it again. Study. See, I know when you look in the ordinary dictionary, it would say, uh, devote yourself to, uh, yes. to some knowledge of time period yes. to study whatever to add knowledge. Yes. But in the Bible, it's a different meaning. Amen. Are you hearing me? Although the idea of study is certainly conveyed in this verse of a scripture, it, 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 in other words, the particular word, what you call, actually means to be diligent. Yes. To be diligent, it means to make every effort. It means to exert yourself. Give your utmost effort. Amen. Let's just walk a little bit. Yes. Are you hearing me? <laughs> Uh, you hear what I'm saying here? In other words, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 3 also talks about this. In other words, it says, Endeavoring, making every effort to keep what? The unity of the spirit in what? In the bond of peace. Mm -hmm. But then he didn't stop there. When he goes to Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 11, it says that we are to be diligent and to make what? Every effort to enter into what? God's rest. So we have a responsibility to know that we can get there yeah. into God's grace. Hallelujah. If you can't get there, then honey bunny, you are on the wrong road. Amen. <laughs> so when you get there, watch the know. You can now do the other part of the scripture where it says, to show thyself approved Amen. unto God. Amen. Can I go there? Yes. To do what? To show thyself approved unto God. In other words, we are to make every effort to present ourselves before God as a proof workman. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you can't come to God any and everywhere. And yes. you've got to be a certain way. Hallelujah. Yes. If you're going to deliver God's word. Yes. Are you hearing me today? Yes. Can I go on? Watch this. In other words, when we stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. We want to hear God say, well done, thy good and faithful student. 
good and faithful student, you have learned from me and you have correctly handled and faithfully taught the word of truth. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? We want God's approval, not only for how we live our life, but for how we study his word. Amen. Are you hearing me today? Amen. So can I move on? Yes. The next part of the verse says, a workman that what? Needed not to be what? Ashamed. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. In other words, watch this. Study. Bible study is hard work. Yes. <laughs> Bible study is hard work, but yet it is very rewarding. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Many people don't want to go down that road, but it's hard work. But you've got to understand, it is rewarding. Listen to me. There are precious gems, hallelujah. There are precious gems, hallelujah, to be found, hallelujah, glory to God. But you can't just find that on the surface. Hello, thank you, brother, sister. You have to do what? Come on, let me hear you say, you have to do what? I know, I know some of you don't you know, classify yourself with farmers. You, you see yourself farmers that are like low income peer workers. But you gotta understand, when you come to find Jews, you have to do what? So you have to go down in the ground. You have to dig. Oh, come on, no, no, you're doing good. <laughs> watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. So, so <laughs> the precious gems to be found, to find them involve laborious work and great effort. Watch this. Digging is not easy. No, sometimes you talk, but you have to dig. Digging is not easy. Some of you know because some of you know the gardening and the little shovel that you hold in your hand. Your hand twisted and all that. You don't know, bother with the gardening no more. Hello, just say ouch. Are you hearing me? But when you talk about you want to find something, you gotta yes. take the shovel and you got to yes. push that dirt in and push that oh, fork in and twist it up and yes. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Glory, Glory to God. I, I know you some of you know being so squish now. Yes. <laughs> you know people don't know where you're coming from. Oh, <laughs> in my Bible school days, they used to call me Spurgeon. Yes! Are you hearing me? Because if you know spurs and spurs and like to dig, it could come and come solid. Yes. And, and that brings me to my point here, but I want to give a quotation from Spurgeon. Hallelujah. Yes. Are you hearing me here? Yes. In other words, here it says here, there are some precious jewels yes. which may be discovered even by the wayfaring man. Uh -huh. Watch this now. So a man who walk by might see something. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, oh, but that's that's nothing compared to what is beneath the ground. Yes. Amen. Come on now. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Listen Amen. Me. But the mass of the gold mm. is hidden in the bowels of the earth. Amen. Watch this now. And he who would be rich in his treasure must dig into scripture. Amen. Hey, yeah, 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 Come yeah, on. yeah, yeah. Are you hearing me here? Yeah. So thou, 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 thou must go down into the depths. Uh -huh. him, and thou must rumpish there. Hallelujah. Amen. Until thou gettest at last at the treasure. Do it. In other words, don't leave until you find something. Yeah. Amen. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I can't understand some people, but like me, when I know that I know when God has put something in my heart, and I know that I know that I don't find it yet, I'm going to continue to study and think until I find it. Hallelujah. I'm not leaving to God speak and show me the gold and the treasure that he has for me to depart to his people. Amen. Are you hearing me today? Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hear me loud and clear. Maybe, may we be among those who labor. According to 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 17. May we be among those who labor, toil to the point of weariness and exertion in the word and doctrine. Yeah, Are you hearing me? But here what 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 16 says. Woe be unto the lazy and the slothful workman who will be ashamed before Christ for his failure to do what? To give himself holy to the study of the word. Are uh, you hear me? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let me move on. In other words, next part of the scripture says, rightly dividing the word of what? The word of truth. 
the word of truth. The word of truth. The word rightly dividing literally means to rightly cut. <laughs> to rightly cut or to cut to cut what? Straight. I'm going to say that again. In other words, it means to rightly cut or to cut straight. In other words, rightly dividing come from the Greek word, come from the Greek word, ortho to me yo. Ortho to me yo. Ortho to me is made up of two words. Two words. Ortho meaning straight, meaning right. As in orthodox. Yeah, 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 yeah. Meaning right. Or you got to me meaning to cut. Are you hearing me? So, 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 in other words, we have a responsibility because when we talk about auto meal, auto, auto meal, or what you call it, well, right, we need to understand auto is what you call a prefix. It's a prefix. It's a prefix for orthodoxy yes. or autopathy yes. or autopratty. Yes. Ay, 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 yes. ay, 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 ay. Are you hearing me? Yes. In other words, let me just fix it quick because I don't want to live in Egypt. In other words, now when we talk about orthodoxy, it means having the right meaning or opinion or belief. Yes. Amen. Are you hearing me today? Or when we talk about the orthopathy, it's talking about the attitude like we hear earlier. Attitude plays an important part because your attitude determines your attitude how far you're going God. Yes. You can't say you're delivering God whether or not have the right attitude. You have to have the right attitude. Yes. Oh, come on now. Amen. Just say, ouch. Are you hearing me? And so not only that, autopratty means to have the right action. Mm-hmm. Let me leave that alone. Yeah. Are you hearing me today? But the question is, do you have the right attitude? Do you have the right action? Do you have the right belief? Are you hearing me today? So Bible schooling, those who are going through the doors now, is to, is to do what? Is to carefully cut. Yes. And divide the word of God, hallelujah, in order to understand it aright. Amen. Are you hearing me, sir? Yes. So you got a responsibility. You can't chop up the word of God. You got to rightly divide the word of truth. Amen. Church members, you got to rightly divide the word of truth. <laughs> what is truth? What is truth? Yes. I know many of us will come with all kind of definition. What is yes. truth? But the Bible teaches that truth is that which is, hallelujah, consistent with the mind, consistent with the will, consistent with the character, consistent with the glory and the being of God. That is truth. Watch this. In other words, truth is the self-expression of God. Best definition you can ever find. Truth is what? The self-expression of God. Glory to God. The Bible says because Jesus is what? It's the living word yes. and the reading word. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, oh, aye, 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 aye. and the life. Hallelujah. So not only is he living word, but he is the written word of God. Amen. No, nobody go down that road no nowhere. Yeah. Uh, you hear me today? So you got to understand this. I'm coming down. I'm coming down. I'm coming down. Oh. Glory to God. So as an illustration of this, consider the dissection of the human body. Are you hearing me? In a medical school, the students actually work with what you call a human cadaver or cops. Yes. <laughs> All right? In other words, it is very difficult for them to learn about the human body apart from having an actual human body to dissect. Yes. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes. So they have to have it to, to know and to understand. We have the word of God. Amen. And we have the right, we have to d- make sure that we rightly divide it, cut it right, cut it straight, yes. so that we can make it be understood and right Amen. to the hearers. Amen. Am I talking to somebody here today? Yes. Today I want you to understand, as I come in conclusion here, may the God of truth yes. <laughs> enable us, enable us to carefully and rightly dissect his precious word. Watch this. Allowing God's word to say what it says. Remembering that God say, God say what he means and he means what he says. Oh, can I say that again? Because I think somebody missed that one. In other words, you got to understand. I, I need to do this because somebody needs to get this right. Hallelujah. In other words, we got to understand as, as, as we, that we pray. My prayer is that God's truth 
enable us to carefully, rightly dissect his precious word. Amen. Allowing God's word to say what it say, not to say what you want it to say. Come on, yes. I, I feel like I needed to say that. Yes. Because too many times we get into what God wants to say and we put it what we want to say. Yes. And then we make it look like God says it. Uh -huh. Hello. Uh-huh. And so, you know, we can't question when you say God says when God did not say. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I got you there now. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so, 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 so that's the problem we have now in the body of Christ. Because too many times we come in and we say God said when God did not say. Are you hearing? And so we who are now walking in discernment in the spirit of God, we don't know whether they're talking of the flesh or talking of the spirit. And we have to get in the spirit in order to know what he or she's coming with. Amen. Oh yes, I feel like I'm going to start preaching. Yes, We're not going to come down now. Glory to God. Are oh, you hear me? Yeah. But you got to understand, you got to know what whatever you're saying is what God wants to say. Amen. So allowing God's word to say what it says, remembering that God says what he means and he means what he says. Yes. It doesn't mean what Noel interpreted it to be. <laughs> In Isaiah 66 and verse 1 and 2 says, May we be those who tremble at his word today. Let us not take the word of God light. It is a serious thing. And it is important that when we have men and women graduating from school, they're supposed to have the know-how to rightly define the word of truth. Are you hearing me? That's why nothing happened in our world today because men and women are not dividing the word of truth in the way. They tell you when they stand on the pulpit, they tell you about what they have and what they can do yes. and all of that kind of thing. It's all about them, me, myself, also prosperity message and all of that kind yes. of stuff. Are you hearing me? If you're walking in the word, God will make you prosper. Amen. You don't have to preach nothing else. Are you hearing me? When you're living the word, God will make you. God wants to raise you out of whatever circumstance or every situation you might find yourself into. God's word is not limited. Come on. When you come to the place of understanding the word of God, it is the resurrection power that can deliver you out of any situation. Amen. Nothing is difficult for God. And we have to get it. But the problem with us is that we get in the way. Man gets in the way. Yes. And we distort and we turn it the way we want it. Yes. And the glory of God cannot be manifest. Uh -huh. Are you hearing me today? Yes. And so that's why nothing today happened. When you go to some of those cemeteries, I mean those churches today. When you go to some of those cemeteries, those, those churches that have no life, yes. glory to God, nothing happens. Yes. And you wonder why are you doing there, glory yes. to God, because they have no, they're not living by the word, they're not doing nothing yes. by the word. Everything is out of proportion. Everything that's according to man agenda. The church is not an organization. The church is an organism. The church is alive and well. Yes. Are you hearing me today? Are you hearing me today? That's why when people come into the church, they should feel something different. They should feel some, some electrifying anointing of the presence of God moving because the word is richly, hallelujah, being brought out in the house of God. And everybody's growing and their life is being shaped and their life is being developed. But by the word of God, it's not by man, not by power, but by his spirit. When the word of God, look here, watch it, I feel this is very, in other words, there's some old, old time preachers what they will tell you, say, Look, you don't have to study the word. All you need to do is just come and stand before the, before the audience and gospel and you open your mouth and the Holy Spirit will speak. Look, no, listen to me. The Holy Spirit can't act with nothing in you. Are you hearing? If nothing is inside you, what the Holy Spirit can you use? Are you hearing? You need to get the word in. Are you hearing? And when the word is inside of you, then the Holy Spirit can act upon whatever you have in there to minister to God's people. Amen. Amen. Some of us are just empty vessels. And we want the pulpit. Hello. We all want the pulpit, but we're just empty vessel. And we've got to be filled with the word. Yes, I tell you, Bible study is hard to some people right now. But we want to stand up behind and say, Thus said the Lord God of us. Hello. Just say, Ouch. I know when I, when I, when I hear the church gone silent, I'm you know, like that. I know say, I'm speaking good. I'm preaching good. Let me pat myself. You're doing good now. Go ahead. I'm coming down, I'm coming down. 
I want you to understand here today. God requires that we rightly, as God's people, rightly divide the word of truth. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I leave it at this in Jesus' name. Bow your heads and pray. Father, we give you praise and we give you praise even now. As I stand, as I pray that word, that your word has gone full with clarity. Lord, we understand about the divine assignment. Now we understand what it is to divine, to break the word rightly. Lord, as we move into that divine assignment, Lord, we will be men and women, women of God that will be rightly dividing the word of truth, that your glory will be manifest in the lives of your people. We look to you today and we give you thanks. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let your say, Amen. Amen.